Hi friends, I welcome you back to this lecture series on aircraft performance. In the last class, we understood uh, something called as gliding flight. A gliding flight is one where the where both the engines are switched off and the aircraft glides by itself, right? So we also understood what happens as the airplane glides from one altitude to another altitude with the help of an example, right? So in this particular lecture, we will be understanding something called as uh, minimum rate of sync and a problem related to this. Sync rate is nothing but the vertical component of the free stream velocity or in this particular case it is the vertical component of the equilibrium glide velocity. Right? So if I redraw the same diagram where the equilibrium flight velocity is v infinity and the horizontal velocity and vertical velocity are the components of this equilibrium velocity v infinity and the horizontal component is represented by vh and vertical component is represented by vv v suffix v v infinity into sin theta i get the expression for rate of sync as under root of 2 by rho infinity into cl cube by cd square multiplied by wing loading wing loading is nothing but the ratio of weight of the aircraft to the planform area. Let's call this equation as equation number 8. So consider this equation. Let's say I want the sink rate to be minimum. What do you mean by that? I want the aircraft to lose its altitude very slowly. Every second the decrement in altitude should be minimum. So when will that occur? When See, observe this equation carefully. When CL power 3 by 2 by CD becomes maximum, when this ratio becomes maximum, then the rate of sink will be minimum. And also, the sink rate decreases with decrease in altitude. Right? The vertical component of the velocity, as we observed in previous class, its magnitude decreases with decrease in altitude. Right? We saw an example as well. If the wing loading is high, the sink rate will also be more because it is directly proportional. If you observe the equation carefully, the sink rate is directly proportional to the wing loading, which means in simple words, more bigger the aircraft, higher will be the sink rate in simple words. Right? Now we will try to understand some fundamental parameters that are used in performance analysis. In that, the first parameter is thrust to weight ratio. Consider an aircraft in steady level flight, as shown, thrust is acting in the direction of the flight path, and drag is opposite of thrust. Lift is acting perpendicular to the free stream velocity or the flight path. And of course, weight is acting towards the center of the earth. Right? So, if I take the ratio of thrust to weight, the thrust force is nothing but, thrust is nothing but mass into acceleration. At what velocity the aircraft is getting, is being accelerated. If I take the ratio of thrust to weight for thrust, with the help of Newton's second law, I can write as mass of the aircraft into its acceleration. Whereas the weight, I can write it as the mass of the aircraft multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Right? So, another way of looking into it, thrust to weight ratio is, it is also the ratios of acceleration of the aircraft itself to the acceleration due to gravity. The question is whether the acceleration of the aircraft is more than acceleration due to gravity 
or less than acceleration due to gravity or whether the thrust to weight ratio is greater than 1 or less than 1. So please understand what happens if thrust to weight ratio is greater than 1 and what when are the situations when thrust to weight ratio is less than 1. Try to collect answers for these questions. We will answer this at the end of this lecture. So another observation of this concept is as thrust to weight ratio increases that means aircraft's acceleration is going to increase with respect to g which is a constant value that also leads to the increment in rate of climb interesting right so in couple of classes before we understood the importance of rate of climb and its relation to thrust to weight ratio so when I say thrust to weight ratio is more, it means that the aircraft's acceleration is also more when compared to g, that is the acceleration due to gravity. Let's do few observations for thrust to weight ratio. For a combat aircraft, the thrust to weight ratio represents its maneuverability. Higher the thrust to weight ratio, higher will be its maneuverability. Right? Also, during a flight, it varies continuously because at uh, in the denominator the weight of the fuel is being reduced and in the numerator the thrust is being changed for every mission for every segment of the mission let's say for takeoff the thrust requirement is different than for cruising understood and the third observation is even if the thrust force is less than the weight of the aircraft itself still the aircraft can take off right if the lift to drag ratio is greater than one the only requirement for that to happen should be the l by d ratio should be greater than one but thrust to weight ratio may be less than one if the thrust to weight ratio is greater than one that means the aircraft can climb vertically right very interesting concept and here are a few examples of the thrust to weight ratio. We have the Dassault Rafale having the thrust to weight ratio of 0.988. And the famous Airbus A380 has got uh, the thrust to weight ratio as 0 0.227. 737 MAX that has been grounded now. Uh, its thrust to weight ratio is 0.3 roughly. See, we have Concorde, which was a supersonic passenger aircraft. Its thrust to weight ratio was 0.37, right? When you compare the same with uh, fighter aircrafts like Eurofighter Typhoon, whose thrust to weight ratio is greater than one, right? Which means the Eurofighter can climb vertically, right? At 90 degrees. Same as for space shuttles. We have for one, it is 1.5 and the other one, it is three, right? Okay. I will end this lecture here. In the next lecture, we will be understanding some aerodynamic relations that are used in performance analysis. Right? Thank you very much.